In this review of exponent rules and their use in operations, I'll present a simplified version of this detailed explanation of the rules for positive exponents. And the reason I'll simplify what I've written here is so it's easier to memorize. So again, we'll have four rules. And since there are four rules, in order to make this easy to memorize, I'll use x to the fourth. So to continue in a logical pattern, we'll have x to the fourth plus x to the fourth, x to the fourth times x to the fourth, x to the fourth raised to the fourth. And then here, we'll have two cases, x to the fourth over x or x over x to the fourth. So again, number four is sort of two cases. All right, if you're adding like bases, you keep the exponent. If you're multiplying like bases, you add the exponents. If you're raising to a power, you multiply exponents. And I think I'll continue down this way. If you're dividing like bases, you subtract exponents. And you have to be careful to subtract the smaller from the larger. So in this case, you would get 1 over x to the third. So again, if you add, you, if you add like bases, you keep the exponent. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. When you raise to a power, you multiply the exponents. And when you divide, you subtract the exponents. And you have to remember, smaller from larger. And again, I, I want to keep this list as short and simple as possible so it's easier to memorize. I'm not including the rule for negative exponent and the zero exponent because once you understand how to use it, you simply use it. Um, these, it's easy to get a little bit confused, especially in these three. You might forget exactly what you're supposed to do in this case versus this case. Um, but if you notice the pattern, it's always a step behind. And then when you divide, you subtract. Uh, I think it makes it a little easier to keep these four straight. So remember, it's going to be four rules. In a moment, you should pause the video and just try one, two, three, four. Write each of these. Remember, for four, it's a double case. And then try to put the result. Um, if you like, you can also memorize this part. Um, but in the end, you might just memorize what you have written here with X's, or you might just memorize what you have here in words. Whatever's going to be the most useful for you. All right, now I'll go ahead and write the four rules in the order that I think it would be best for you to do so. You might just be happy with this, or if you also want the words, or if you only want the words, 
here goes this version, I would say when you add, keep, when you multiply, when you raise to a power, and when you divide, subtract. And remember that's smaller from larger. Looking at number one, parenthesis next to parenthesis, so we'll multiply. And when you multiply like bases, you add exponents. Notice 2 is very similar to 1, it's just that we have a couple negative exponents to contend with. But we start out just the same, multiply, like bases, so we add exponents, But now we have a negative exponent, so we'll have to take the reciprocal of this. So the negative 15 and b to the 14th will remain up top, but a to the negative 9th moves to the denominator and becomes a to the positive 9th. Looking at number 3, we have a negative exponent. We'll have to take the reciprocal of everything in the parentheses. But prior to that, notice we have m to the 0. That's just a 1. So I'm going to cross it out. So this leaves us with, and now we have to the positive 2. Remember, when you raise to a power, you multiply exponents. That's 9 to the 1st and n to the 7th. And this would be 9, 2 times 1 to the 2nd. So that would give us 81, and then n to the 14th. With number 7, we again have a negative exponent. So we'll take the reciprocal of everything within the parentheses. And now that's to the positive 3. Again, we'll use the power rule. So that's 5 to the first, 2 to the first, y to the first. Send in your 3 to each exponent. So that's 5 to the 3rd, or 125. Z to the 12th. Two to the third, or eight, x to the twenty one, and y to the third. Looking at number four, um, the t's and the u's cannot interact because there's a separate set of parentheses with an exponent. We have to take care of this exponent first to get these out of the parentheses. So we'll be using the power rule, which will give us t to the 12th, u to the 8th, 
and that's still over t u to the 13th. Now we can simplify. So this is t to the first. We cancel that out, subtract 1, left with t to the 11th. Looking at the u's, cancel that out, subtract 8, we're left with u to the 5th. So we have t to the 11th over u to the 5th. Looking at 8, we could send this 2 in using the power rule, but uh, I think before we do that, it'll be best if we just clean up what's inside. All right, so looking at 10 and 24, divide by 2, divide by 2. Looking at our x's, cancel out x to the first, subtract 1. Looking at the y's, Cancel out y to the third, subtract 3, and the z just sits there. So what do we have? 5x to the fifth z over 12 y to the fifth. And this is all raised to the second power. So we'll use the power rule. Remember, these each have an exponent of 1 if nothing's written. So we're going to multiply each exponent by a 2. So this will be 5 squared, or 25, x to the 10. z squared and this is over 12 squared or 144 and y to the 10. Looking at number 5, just a straightforward power rule. Remember, this is 7 to the first, k to the first, m to the first. So each of those will get multiplied by a 2. So 7 squared, 49, k to the second, m to the second. Now if you look at 9, it could seem similar to 5. I have a 7, a k, and a m. 7, k, and a m. But here, nothing's being added or subtracted. Whereas on number 9, we have a subtraction going on within the parentheses. So you have to be careful how you treat it with this exponent. Here, the power rule allows you to take the shortcut and just multiply exponents. Here there really isn't a shortcut. You have to do what the exponent says, which is realize that you have two sets of parentheses. So now with the two sets of parentheses, you have to make sure to multiply each term by each term. That is, 7k multiplies both terms. And this negative m multiplies both terms. Now you can clean this up by combining these two like terms. And 6 is certainly similar to 9.
And again, we can clean this up by combining the two like terms. Looking at number 10, uh, this 5n squared applies to each term. So we'll rewrite this. Now cleaning up each of these, divide by 5, divide by 5, cancel out n squared, subtract 2, divide by 5, divide by 5, cancel out n squared, subtract 2, divide by 5, divide by 5, leaves you with 1, and cancel out the n squareds again would leave you with a 1. So what we have left standing is 3n to the seventh, 2n to the fifth, and here you have to put that 1. 5n squared over 5n squared is simply a 1. Looking at 11 and 15, what you have in parentheses is the same, but with 15 you have parentheses next to parentheses. So this means to multiply each term by each term. Whereas with 11 you have an operation sign between the parentheses. You have to distribute this, call it a negative 1 if you like, but you have to distribute this negative to each term inside parentheses to get rid of the parentheses so we can combine these terms with like terms over here. So this will give us a negative 3y and a positive 4. Here there's nothing in front of parentheses so we can just drop them. And now I'll put these underneath the like terms. Signs are different. Subtract. Keep the sign of the larger. So with 15, we'll distribute 7y to each term. And we'll distribute this positive 10 to each term. We can combine these two like terms. So we'll be left with 12. Now 12 is similar to 11. You just have this sign in front of the parentheses you have to distribute to each term within. So this gives us 12. Again, this first set of parentheses doesn't have anything in front, so I can drop the parentheses and I'll be able to combine it with like terms. and I'll stack these under the like terms. Signs are the same. Signs are the same, we'll be adding. And remember, when you add or subtract like terms, you keep the exponent. And here the signs are different. And 16 is similar to 15 in that you have multiplication. 
It's just that each term here is going to have to hit each of the three terms in this case. and negative 5 will have to hit each term. So negative 5 times 4x squared gives us a negative 20x squared. I'm going to put that under the x squared term so it's easier to keep track of my like terms. We'll look at 13 and 14, the two with scientific notation involved. So for 13, we're to write this in scientific notation. It's always one digit in front of the decimal times 10, and we have to figure out the exponent. Again, we can't change the value of the original expression. And in order to have the decimal here, we moved it one, two, three, four spaces. So in order to take this number and put it back, we would multiply by 10 to the negative 4. And for number 14, um, we're to multiply this by 10 to the 5th. So we'll need to move that decimal five spaces. Starting here, we would go And we'll need a zero to hold each place. So what we have is, and we'll put in a comma. So looking at 17, we'll have to take care of these exponents. The exponent applies to what it touches and nothing more. So that's and you bring down that negative. Over here, the exponent's touching the parentheses. And this plus is going to drop straight down. So now the signs are different. You subtract smaller from the larger. and you keep the sign of the larger. Looking at 18, whatever's in the parentheses is being raised to the zero power, so this all becomes a 1. Here, whatever's in parentheses is raised to a zero, so it becomes 1. So we bring down the negative 5 and it's sitting next to parentheses, so it's supposed to multiply. So this gives us this 1 is still here. And then we have looking at 19, uh, we've got a negative exponent. So this will become the 2 stays in the numerator r to the negative third moves to the denominator and becomes r to the positive third. Looking at 20, the negative exponent applies to the parentheses. So we have 1 over 2r to the positive third. It's positive now that it's in the denominator. And here we can use the power rule. We'll multiply each exponent. Remember, that's 2 to the first, r to the first. 
So we have 1 over 2 to the third, which is 8, and r to the third. Looking at 21, um, we've got a negative exponent. We could clean things up a little bit inside, especially with these zero exponents. So basically x to the zero is a one. I'm just gonna cancel these out because y to the zero is a one. So I think I'm gonna do 21 a little bit differently than seven. With seven, I had a negative exponent but nothing inside here had a negative exponent. So I chose to take the reciprocal of what was inside parentheses, making this a positive exponent. And then when I use the power rule, all my exponents stayed positive. With 21, if I use the power rule and send this negative two to each exponent, I'll have x to the negative 8 and y to the positive 16. So this x to the negative 8 has to move down. And you can't leave air in the numerator there's a 1. That's because you actually took the reciprocal of x to the negative 8th, which is 1 over x to the 8th. Looking at 22, I have all these negative exponents, and I want to simplify what's inside. So I think for the first step, I'll just move all these negative exponents to make them positive. So that'll be x to the 10, y to the 8, over x to the 13, y to the 7. This is all still raised to the fifth power, but now we can clean this up. Cross out x to the 10, subtract 10. Cross out y to the 7, subtract 7. So now we have y to the first over x to the third, and this is all raised to the fifth power. Finally, we'll use our power rule. Remember, that's y to the first. So we have y to the fifth to the fifteenth. And finally, looking at 23, everything in parentheses is raised to the zero power. Anything raised to the zero power is one. If you would like some practice with these concepts, I have two worksheets, each with detailed answer keys.